G'day, I'm James. Have you ever noticed how interrelated the volume formulas are for cones, spheres, or hemispheres, and cylinders? It's actually more striking if you actually imagine having a hemisphere, radius r, and height r, and to do a cone with base radius r, also height r, and a cylinder, base radius r, and also height r, keep all the r's the same, heights the same as r, then the volume of the cone here is one third pi r squared base times height, pi r squared times r one-third pi r cubed. The volume of the hemisphere is going to be one-half or four-thirds pi r cubed. So the volume of the hemisphere is two-thirds pi r cubed. And the volume of the cylinder for height r will be base times height, pi r squared times r. The volume here is three-thirds pi r cubed. That is kind of gorgeous and kind of striking. One-third, two-thirds, three-thirds of pi r cubed. And I was just playing around with that, and then something stunning struck me. I had this idea of, okay, can I do some sort of intermediate version of going from cones to cylinders and do some other version of a hemisphere, namely this. I said, okay, let's take this cone, uh, the cylinder, of radius r, height r. So let me draw a big version of it. Height r, radius r, bingo, there it is. And imagine doing this. Imagine drawing a concentric circle at the top and actually make this figure here. It's like a truncated cone, it's called a frustum. And I'll have some radius x, so the base radius is r, and the height here is r, but let me have some radius x for this concentric circle at the top. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering, is it possible to find the correct value of x to give me a frustum here whose value is halfway between being x equals zero, which would be a cone, one third pi r cubed, to x being the full radius r, which is a cylinder, three thirds pi r cubed, what value of x gives me the hemisphere, two thirds pi r cubed. I want the volume of this frustum, volume of this frustum, frustum to be two thirds pi r cubed. What value of x does that? I worked it out. Um, it's just a, a fun exercise, actually, so let's actually do it. Um, it seems very tempting to keep the cone going up, all the way up, and make a full cone, because then I'll have, some, I'll have some big height like this, and the volume of the frustum will just be the volume of the full cone, which would be, what, one-third its base times height, uh, minus the volume of the top part of the cone, which, again, is one-third base times height. So we can work that out. Um, I know this section of height is the radius, r, and this section of height, I don't know what it is. I'll call it y. But I can at least get something going. Um, all right, let's get it going. Uh, the volume of the frustum. Volume of the frustum would actually be the full cone. One third pi r squared its full height. R plus y. Minus the volume of the top part. Minus one third pi or pi x squared. Pi x squared times its height. Y. Ooh, that's going to be a messy formula. That's a messy formula. All right, um, I've got X's and Y's and R's everywhere, but actually there's got to be a relationship between X, Y, and R going on here. In fact, you can see one. Similar triangles. I can actually see, um, okay, a little side scratch work. Uh, the full height compared to the full base, so R plus Y compared to R, must match this height compared to its space, Y over X. Okay, um, let me solve for y. Um, uh, okay, so I get rx plus uh, xy equals ry. So y must be rx uh, over r minus x. All right, y is rx over r minus x. Great! Is that helpful? I don't know. Let's find out. But it's something. It's something. I have to put it in. Ooh, I have to put it in. What have we got here? I've got one third pi. Uh, r cubed plus r squared y minus x squared y. Ooh, ooh, okay. This is one third pi r cubed plus y times r squared minus x squared. Okay, at least you've got a y now. Y is rx over r minus x. All oh, this factors, r minus x times r plus where x. So this equals, I'm hoping I'm still on the screen, one third pi r cubed plus rx over r plus x. Whoa, okay, okay, so the, air, the volume of the frustum is also, via the frustum is uh, one third pi r cubed plus uh, r squared x plus r x squared. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so I've now got two formulas for the same frustum, they're volumes. So actually, I need all of this then to be such that it creates this formula and makes it into that formula. So that means I need r cubed plus r squared x plus r x squared to equal, I need a two, I need an r cubed. Uh, that's all I need. If that, was, if that were two r cubed, life would be golden. Bingo, it must be two r cubed. Uh, which means I've got a little quadratic formula in x. 
rx squared plus r squared x, uh, 2r cubed and r cubed means I've got uh, minus r cubed equals zero, equals zero. All right, so just a quadratic formula, solve for x. And if you solve for x, you'll be in for a really interesting little golden ratio surprise. Remember, x has to be smaller than r, so the golden ratio comes up, but how does it come up? Why does it come up? Kind of blew my mind. Why would the golden ratio be appearing in relating volumes cones with cylinders? Kind of lovely, kind of magical and beautiful. Gotta love maths.